I'm Olivia Twist. I'm an illustrator, arts facilitator, and educator, and I'm from East London. I graduate, yeah, yeah. I graduated from LCC in 2015 and the Royal College in 2017. I use drawing to demonstrate worth. All of my work acts as an ICU. You know that kind of colloquial term, you know that kind of when you see somebody and you give them the nod. Um, that's what my work acts as and serves as for me. Through illustration, I aim to bring about the shock of the familiar, and that's when you encounter niche and esoteric things in unexpected places. And it's a term I learned like, from this local historian called S.I. Martin. I'm somebody that sees beauty in the mundane, and I don't believe every story has to be spectacular in order to be documented. I love trainers. Um, these are some of my faves from 2020. You know when we were in lockdown and... I was buying trainers to preserve mental health. Um, as an illustrator, I want to capture social history as it's unfolding. I want to um, help fill in missing chapters. I want to make it easier for marginalized communities to be able to look back. I use drawing as a conversation tool. And from my experience, it's been the most successful way to stir intergenerational discussion. And through my work, I want to encourage the taking up of space. Research is my favorite thing ever as a designer. Um, I take a human-centered approach to it, so I'll be collecting, eavesdropping, derieving, all of that. Um, I always make effort to become part of the furniture. I love oral history. The majority of my time is spent talking to people and being on site. Um, participatory design and relational aesthetics are quite important in my practice. And with the drawing, for me, that's not the most important thing. I would say that the conversations that come from the drawing are the things I care about most. Um, this is what my work was looking like in 2015. So I'll just talk a little bit about style development. Um, and this was kind of like in response to, you know, like when you're at uni and you have those portfolio reviews with design professionals and then they come in and give you feedback. And then this guy, I don't know his name, but he's really helped me, isn't it? Um, he said to me, um, your work is great, but you're a bit like a visual chameleon. Like, I will be changing my style each brief. So I kind of took that as a challenge to, like, find something that is distinctively Olivia, you know? And um, I've always been working with, like, simple materials. And I wanted to think, like, what does feel organic? What is free-flowing? So um, this is what I came up with. Um, then, Sharpie is my material of choice. A lot of people feel like um, my work is a lino cut, but as I was saying, I like to use like simple tools to make complex marks, you know, accessible materials. I grew up drawing with biro and stuff, online paper. Um, and for me, the thing I love is like the bleed the Sharpie gives you. I scan in my work and I add color digitally, or I work straight onto like found materials, jazzy paper, all of that. Um, these are some illustrations of my brothers. They feature heavily in my work. Um, and I feel like I'm just like documenting their growth. Um, the blue pick and the yellow one over there, they've been like on um, billboards around London as well. So it's been actually really nice to like tell them, oh, come, let's go and look at this big picture of you or a big picture of me and you. Um, this is some more work I did um, inspired by them. And it was in response to the don't zap the zip, um, which was happening. Like it was a kind of movement that was happening um, during lockdown when it was more serious and heavy. Um, and the government, they were offered like a bailout deal from TfL. And one of the things that they were insisting on was suspending free travel for 16 to 18 year olds. And we know like how disastrous that would be. And for me, I was really thinking about how like the Oyster card for me really helped me love London, know it like the back of my hand, feel at home and claim it as yours. So after months of campaigning and negotiations, it was announced that the Oyster and free travel won't be suspended for the kids. So these are some of my brother's Oyster card picks. Um, here's some work that I've done for We Transfer. I really enjoy like like when you get the commissions and it feels like personal work stuff you would have done anyway. Um, here I was just really focusing on mark making, wanting to show like proper diversity um, in hairdos, 
and like you know when you go to the barber they have that ring light and the sheen that's on the waves all of that those are some kind of things i was trying to bring about this is some work i did recently with levi's and the rapper any for her limited edition collection and all of the money from this jacket went to a charity that helps young girls and like gets them into creativity for self-expression um, so the lyrics on the jacket are from Annie's first freestyle, they're embroidered. Then we've got a little bit of illustration inspired by her Peng Black Girls music video as well. Um, this is a project that has really shaped my practice and it was an artist residency I did at Carney's Community Youth Club. Um, and here is where I really like understood the importance of creating with and not for. Um, and while I was an artist in residence here, we did loads of workshops. So Carnes uses um, boxing and cycling to help young people build confidence, self-discipline, all of those things. So we did some bike customization workshops. Um, there were bikes that were donated by the police, like, you know, like stolen bikes that get found. I think the police redistributes them to different charities. So the kids had really good bikes. You can see this guy with um, a proper nice Carrera bike. We told him, don't customize it, just keep it fresh like that. Um, so with the other kids, we were yeah, customizing, teaching them lino printing, doing like loads of fun bits like that. They also have something called Carnes Come Dine With Me where um, there's a lot of youth clubs in Battersea, so they host like a come dine with me quarterly. And the kids, they were like, okay, Olivia, we need bunting, we need menus, we need the A board outside, all of that. So those are the things that we designed together. And during the residency, I created this mural with them. It was 10 meters long. And the thing that the kids really wanted to communicate in the mural is that sense of community. Um, so often, like, we see, um, I guess, like, what, my relationship with Battersea at the time, I didn't realize it was so, like, predominantly full of, like, families and all of these high-rise blocks and things like that. So the kids were saying that, okay, we need to um, show that um, togetherness, kinship, and they had a lot of shared experiences together, so we wanted to just allow them to present themselves this is some more work I did with the youth club. Um, all of these young boys are now qualified bike mechanics, so if your tires bust, you can go to them. And basically, we did um, another mural in their bike workshop. They've got a kind of community interest thing called Battersea Bikes, um, and that was really brilliant. This is some work I done for Sports Direct, and as I was telling you, I like trainers, so this was nice. Um, it's in the Oxford Street flagship store. This is some work I did for my mate, Lexa Moore. She does rap as well. And it's her single and EP cover. And the thing that I really enjoyed about this is that I feel like she does what I do with illustration through music. So it's nice to work together on that. This is some work I did for a young adults book called The Art of Protest, which is written by Dee Nichols, who's a activist and academic in America. And the aim of the book is to introduce young readers to past and current protest movements and help them identify meanings behind the associated slogans and symbols. So this is a spread about the Memphis sanitation strike in 1968. We've got um, Vanessa Nakate, a Ugandan climate activist as well. So for her, like climate change is an abstract and a future thing. She has that lived experience. And then this is some illustration about the Soweto uprising in South Africa as well. This is some work that is kind of ongoing as well, um, commissioned by the Art Gallery in Birmingham. And here I'm looking at that kind of house share life, you know, and basically I guess this project was commissioned during lockdown, so you're really doing house sharing then and proper getting to know the people you live with. Um, so through this project, I'm touching on platonic intimacy, shoddy landlords and temporality. Um, and here, there's just a little bit of illustration, thinking about like conflict resolution, like people who don't want to wash dishes, but to resort to a little bit of tape, but it's doing the job. Um, we were also thinking about, I guess like, 
building community, it takes time, isn't it? So there was a time where we would all have like our separate oat milk, almond milk, all of that in the fridge, like having four milks when really and truly you only need one milk in it. So now we've been moving towards that, like having them communal essentials. Um, got a little bit of like garden shoes as well. And for me personally, I'm not someone who's like a garden girl. I prefer to be in a balcony. So I don't have any garden shoes there. Um, this is some work I did for the Guardian US, and it's about um, these two Nigerian farmers that took on a massive oil company to court um, and sued them for pollution, and they won. And through this project, it was really great to learn about like the impacts the pollution has on our ecosystems and like what's it doing to local economies. This project also really challenged me, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I built some really great um, connections. And it was working with St. Christopher's Hospice, which is in, is in Sydenham. And the project was commissioned by the Museum of London. And the project brought together 10 people who had lost a loved one during the pandemic to share their experiences. Um, as a group, we had like workshops over a series of months. And I led some storytelling ones. Um, we had some kind of talking about memory as well. And this is some work that we generated. So this is my piece, um, kind of thinking about the memory of my late great aunt. Um, and basically, as a group, we decided that, okay, how do we document this um, grief in this kind of time? You know, so together we decided that, you know what, we're going to make a series of prints. So we made six Rizzo prints. Here are two of them. Um, and with each of the Rizzo prints, they're inspired by a kind of a communal narrative that we built. Everybody like shared their experiences. We found things that overlap and all of the similarities. And then all of the participants have kind of provided like an oral history, talking about their time and how it relates to the illustration. And at the moment, um, the Rizzo prints are on show at the hospice's new art center and they're also going to be exhibited at museum of london as they've been acquired and entered their permanent collection um that's me thanks for listening